We're going to find logarithms using a table and linear interpolation. This is chapter 12. We've got 15 previous videos that are linked in the description to help you. Tables are made by giving function values for a continuous function. And we can use the given data to find values between them with a procedure called interpolation. Those of you who have been watching me since middle school know we covered this in eighth grade. Interpolation, well, it's a process by which approximate function values can be determined between other values in a table. Interpolation can be done in various ways and the easiest and most common being linear interpolation. And we're going to use it in relation to the table of common logarithms that we've been using. It applies to a table of any continuous function. So if we had this long line here, this linear line here, and you saw 1 and then a missing value and then 3, 4, 5, we can tell this is in between 1 and 3 and using linear interpolation, we can decide that that's a 2. See? It's easy because it's a straight line. When we think about how a table of values for a f any function is made, we select members of the domain. We've got our first x, second x, third x, fourth x, and so on, and we compute the corresponding function values. So function of x is the same thing as y, isn't it? So we have our first one, our second one, our third one, our fourth one, and we tabulate, which means arrange or list, the graph and graph the results. So this would be our table of values, our x, y table, or function table, and they correspond to each other, don't they? So you might be used to seeing it more like this. So we can find the function value f of x for an x that's not on the table. So if we wanted to find something in between the 2 and the 5 here, they're both 2, they're both 5, so we can pretty much tell that if we wanted to find the center point right here in between this 2 and this 5, we could find the halfway, right? If x is halfway between x sub 1 and x sub 2, then we can take the number halfway between the function of x sub 1 and the function of x sub 2 as an approximation to that f of x. So halfway between a 2 and a 5 is a 3 and a half, isn't it? So we'd be able to put a 3 and a half, 3 and a half in here and we'd be pretty accurate, wouldn't we? We divide the length from the x sub 1 to the x sub 2 in a certain ratio, and then we divide the length of the function of x sub 1 to the function of x sub 2 in the same ratio. That's linear interpolation. So this is a really rough drawing, so bear with me. If we have this curved nonlinear line, we can fit a linear function to the closest points, closest known data points. We make a straight line, and that would be our approximation. That would be the actual, see? And we get the approximation for the function of x from that linear function, not from the function itself, see? If the original function, if that pink line had been straight, well, our value would be exact. But because it's curved, if the original function is nonlinear, it'll give us only an approximation. So if it's quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic, it's only going to give us an approximation, all right? So I hope you saw the previous video so you don't get lost now. We can apply linear interpolation to table two common lo logarithms that we've been using from the appendix of the textbook. You can also find it online. And the way it works is, as we've covered before, you find the first value down here. We got a 3.4. If we're looking for a 3.48, we find the 3.4 and we follow it along to column eight. See, and we get a 0. 0.5416. So if we need to find log 34,870, we first write it in scientific notation. We did that in the previous videos. And we get 3.487 because we have to have one digit in front of the decimal, right? And it's, time ten, it's times 10 to the fourth power, okay? Because we move the decimal four spaces. So our characteristic is a four. We can see it right there. Now we find the mantissa. And then from that table two of common logarithms, We've got 3.48, but it's in between 3.48 and 3.49, isn't it, because of that 7? So we find both. So here's our 3.4, here's 3.48 in the 8 column, and here's the 9 column. So it's going to be in between 0.5416 and 0.5428. It's in between these two. We know that 3.487 is 7 tenths of the distance between 3.48 and 3.49. That 7 tells us that. 
So, to estimate log 3.487, we find the number that's 7 tenths of the way from 0 0.5416 and 0 0.5428. Visually, here's 0 0.5416, here's 0 0.5428. We want about 7 tenths of the way to find that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the difference between 3.48 and 3.49. It's 0 0.0012. We take this number away from that number and find the difference. We get 0 0.0012. Now, we take 7 tenths of 0 0.0012 and add it to 0 0.5416. Then that would be 7 tenths more, see? So here's our 0 0.5416 plus that 7 tenths times 0 0.0012 to find the 7 tenths of it. We get 0 0.5416 plus 0 0.0084. We get this that can be rounded to 0 0.5424. See, the 4 tells that 4 to stay the same, all right? We add the characteristic 4 that we knew we had. We know the characteristic is a 4 because of that exponent right there, okay? And 4 added to the mantissa of 0.5424 is 4.5424. So we know that log 34,870 is approximately 4.5424, okay? Let's try it going the other way. Let's try going it with a negative number for our characteristic. So if we wanted to find log 0 0.01413, we write it in scientific notation, and it's going to be times 10 to the negative 2 exponent because we have to move the decimal point back. So we know our characteristic is a negative 2, and we also know from the previous videos it can be represented as an 8 minus 10 because that makes negative 2, doesn't it? Now we find the mantissa from our table of common logarithms. We've got a 1.14 1.41, and we know this is between that and 1.41, or 1.42. 1, that 3 means it's in between 1.41 and 1.42, all right? So, we look up 1.41, here's 1.41, 1 and 1.42. So we know it's in between 0.1492 and 0.1523. It's in between here. And that little 3 tells us it's 3 tenths of the way. So it's going to be about not quite a third of the way. So we take this number from this number again, and we get 0 0.0031, and it's 3 tenths of the way. So we have to multiply that to the point zero zero three one to get that three tenths, don't we? So we're going to add these together, and we're going to add it to this guy right here, right? Like we did before. So now we've got point four one four nine two plus point three times point zero zero three one. This makes point zero 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 nine three. We add it to that one, and we get point one five zero one three. We round this which is our mantissa, we round it to 0.1501. Seeing that 3 drops off? Now we add that characteristic, that negative 2, as an 8 minus 10, and we get 8.1501 minus 10. Or, if we do the math, it's negative 1.8499. See? So we know log 0 0.01413 is approximately 8.1501 minus 10, or negative 1.8499. 0.8499. See? Now, if you remembered back from the grade 8 math, or if you didn't, to interpolate, this prefix means between. Inter means between. So if we needed to find this value, it's in between values that we know. And then we figure out what it is. To extrapolate means we don't have the values. It's beyond. Extra means beyond. So that means we're going to figure out what the values are by following this trend line. If these are all the same distance apart from each other, and that's 2, 4, 6, 8, we can pretty much extrapolate that that's a 10 and a 12, can't we? All right? So this is what we're doing. We're going in between values, all right? And we're using the values on each side of it to help us figure out what that one is, okay? I hope this was helpful. And I'm going to have links to the grade 8 math 12 point uh, let's see, I think it was, let me see, 14.2a and 14.2b. I'm going to have links to those videos because 
maybe an 8th grade video will bring your memory back or be a little bit more understandable. Our next video is 12.6b, and in this video we found logarithms using tables and interpol linear interpolation. Now we're going to find anti-logarithms, okay? It's going to be a link to those 15 videos, and I hope you're having a great day. I always say that, but I really do. I hope you are having a great day, and I always say I'm proud of you, which I am, and I want you to keep trying, and baby steps, and you're going to do great, all right? I believe in you. See you next time. Bye.